and today we're going to read Bedtime Stories, Part 2, starting on Nail Soup. Hen stood in her brand new kitchen in her brand new house inside. In front of her were 642 cardboard boxes full of her worldly goods. So far, she'd only unpacked one box and found her soup pot, her chopping board, and a knife. And would you believe it, one rusty nail. A door, the doorbell rang and a voice called, Cooey, anybody home? My new neighbor, thought Hen, running to open the door. On the doorstep stood a large and scrawny fox. Good morning, he said. Welcome to the neighborhood, my dear. I just thought I'd pop around to ask you for over for dinner tonight. Hen was about to reply when Fox grabbed her, slammed the door shut behind himself, and growled. Nothing too elaborate, just you and me. You'll be the one simmering in the casserole, and I'll be the one with the knife and fork. Hen thought quickly, very quickly, as you do when you're about to be gobbled up. Dear Fox, I have a much better idea, she squawked. Why don't you help me finish off my pot of nail soup? Seems a shame to waste a good soup when you're awfully, obviously so ravenous. Nail soup, said Fox. Never heard of it. It's delicious, said Hen. Now, why don't you unpack those boxes while I bring the soup to boil? With a loud humph, he began to unpack the boxes, all 642 of them. Fox had just unpacked the last one when Hen brought him a spoonful of soup to taste. Brrrr, he splat, he spat. It's like hot, rusty water. Mmm, you're quite right, murmured Hen. Need some salt to bring out the true nailish of the soup. Tell you what, why don't you paint the living room while I stir in the salt? Fox frowned. Something wasn't going quite right here, but he didn't know what it was. Grumbling to himself, he headed for the living room. He just put a final coat of gloss on the woodwork when Hen brought another spoonful to try. Urch, he gagged. Hot, rusty, salty water. You could be right, mused Hen. What we need is are some root vegetables to get it, give it some body. Well, could you be troubled to put up my kitchen unit while I chop, chop and peel the vegetables? Fox slither, slitted his eyes and glared at Hen, but then his tummy growled and he decided to humor her. Armed with bent screwdriver and a set of instructions in sober carot, he set to work. He was just admiring his handwork, handiwork when Hen brought him another spoonful. Mmm, much better, he said, but said Hen. Still a bit bland, said Fox. Do you know, I'm so glad you said that, said Hen. I think so too. My instinct tells me that this soup needs a Mediterranean theme. Be a dear and sand the living dining room th floor while I pick some beans and tomatoes for our soup. Next time, vowed Fox, no matter what it tastes like, I'm eating it. He picked up a packet of minuscule nail files and headed for the lit dining room. Fox was lying, painting, in a corner of the freshly sanded dining room when Hen appeared with a spoonful of soup. Nearly there, she said brightly as the exhausted Fox took a slit sip. Great, he wheezed. Perfect, let's have it. No. Now, now, child, chided Hen, don't rush it. 
Rome wasn't bu Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. I still have to add some herbs and a wee bit of parsnip. Look, why don't you light the fire and eat by the firelight? Where's the wood? Grown fox. Growing on that big tree outside, said Hen, passing him a tiny axe. The fire was blazing merrily, and the fox was nearly asleep beside it when Hen appeared with another spoonful. Delicious! Don't I suppose? No, said Hen firmly. It needs to simmer a while to soften the nail thoroughly. Well, wait, you can sew some cur you can sew some curtains for that window so we can eat our soup by the fire without having to look at the darkness outside. Dumbly, the fox picked up a needle and began to sew a full-length box pleated fully lined curtains for hand win hand's window. Just as he finished and pulling the curtains closed against the night. Hen arrived a brimming pot of soup. Absolutely scrumptious, said Fox, devour devouring his first bowl. Heaven in a pot, ex he exclaimed after his third bowl. Who thought a nail could taste this good, he said. Halfway through bowl eleven. Heavens, and so filling, too, he gasped after bowl 28. I couldn't possibly manage another spoonful, groaned of he. Emptied the pot. Oh, well, said Hen with a wide grin. Then it must be time for you to eat me. She sat back in her armchair by the fire, safe in the knowledge that fox was too was far too full to eat anything more. Aware that he's been totally outfoxed, Fox looked at hen, looked at hen, gave a huge blurch, and with a furious roar, ran howling through the front door, and he was never seen again. The end. Bye. I hope you like this book.